we're not on. Let's bring this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Uh, looking for an adoption of the agenda. Any changes or additions? I'd like to make a motion to add an addition to the agenda and in camera 15B advice from the officials, VoIP section 24. Thank you. Would anyone like to make a motion to, to accept the amended agenda? Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Abe. Yeah, can uh, Councillor Meister uh, move to add it? Yeah, add just it? accept it, yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? All those in favor? Passed. Um, we'll add that into the in camera then. Moving on, minutes. Looking for an adoption of the regular meeting minutes from January 9th, 2023. Make a motion to adopt the meeting minutes from January 9th as presented. Thank you. All in favor? Passed. <coughs> Looking to open public hearing at 7.01 p.m. for bylaw 1738, land use bylaw amendment. Abe? Sure. Uh, so this is a public hearing uh, for. Uh, just get to the right page here. Uh, bylaw 1738, uh, and this is um, regarding uh, redesignating uh, of a piece of uh, property that previously had no designation to public. Uh, as we discussed previously, uh, this is a piece of property the town is giving away to the hospital so they can improve their parking and deliveries uh, over there. And this was uh, item was circulated uh, to the public and the neighborhood, and we did not have, and it was also uh, published in the paper, the, the public hearing, and we haven't received any uh, comments to date. Is there anyone in the crowd that would like to speak on this? Nope. That's the case. We'll close the public hearing at 7:02 p.m. Moving on to our action items. Bylaw 1738, land use bylaw <coughs> amendment, second and third readings. Go ahead, Abe. Okay, as described, this is a land use bylaw to uh, rezone a piece of uh, town property from, from no zoning to uh, zone public. Uh, and it's on the agenda for second and third readings. We'll open it up for discussion. Any comments in regards to this? Mm -hmm. I'll move to give a second reading. Moved by Councillor Cutler. Question? Uh, moved by Councillor Cutler to give bylaw 1738 a land use bylaw amendment second reading. Okay. Any further questions, comments, concerns? All in favor? Passed. Looking for a third and final reading. Anyone like to make that? Moved by Councillor Kettles. Question? Uh, moved by Councillor Kettles to give bylaw 1738 land use bylaw amendment third read and final reading. Right. Any further questions, comments, concerns? All those in favor? Pass. Moving on. Bylaw 1757, land use bylaw amendment, first reading. Go ahead, Abe. So another, um, uh, we talked about this a year ago, um, about this is the uh, walkway over by the golf course that is um, not used by the town uh, and not used by anybody. Uh, and we approached the landowners uh, on either side of the walkway and they both are interested in acquiring uh, basically half that walkway each. Uh, and so uh, this is the first reading uh, of the land use bylaw amendment to uh, zone this from public to uh, residential. So it can be uh, acquired by the homeowners. Mm -hmm. All right, open it up for discussion. Comments? I'm looking for a first reading. Anyone like to make that? Make a motion to give bylaw 1757 its first reading. Moved by Councillor Zimmer. Question? Moved by Councillor Zimmer to give bylaw 1757 a land use bylaw amendment first reading. All right. Any further questions, comments, concerns? All those in favor? Pass. 
passed. Moving on, correspondence. Mayor Brian Holden, Town of Bonacord, Ambulance Crisis. Go ahead, Abe. And so this is just some uh, municipal uh, correspondence getting circulated to uh, uh, municipalities throughout the province regarding the uh, medical first respond responders program, uh, Alberta Health's uh, response program, whereby um, fire departments assist uh, in times when there's not a, an ambulance available uh, to be medical first responders. And so um, we've seen a lot of these correspondence items and we know that there are issues and it's just uh, the town was CC'd in this, in this item. Open it up for comments. We're already working with that with Alberta Health Services. I think I've made my stance on it pretty clear. So you can take it for information if everyone's in agreement. Moving on, correspondence Canadian Federation of Independent Business, 2003 Municipal Business Report. Abe? Yeah, so uh, where the town is being invited to uh, review the business report, there are they are advocating for local businesses, uh, and the uh, report uh, highlights uh, three areas: municipal taxation of business, red tape reduction, and small business friendliness policies. They have best practices in these in these areas, and so they are uh, sending correspondence again to uh, multiple municipalities throughout Alberta and BC, I believe. Um, and uh, and requesting a meeting as well uh, to share the report. So, open up for discussion. Um, is this something that our economic development officer would be interested in setting up maybe for us? Let's see what the report is. For sure. Yeah. Any other comments in regards to it? Do you like a motion for that, or are you just going to direct it to Brady? Uh, yeah, a motion directing administration to uh, provide a summary uh, of the uh, municipal business report. Like to make that? I'll make that motion. Moved by Council Meister. Question whenever you're ready. Uh, moved by Councillor Meister to direct administration to uh, review the 2023 municipal business report provided by Canadian Federation of Independent Business and to provide a report to Council. Any further questions, comments, concerns? All in favor? Passed. Moving on, correspondence, Rowan House, Safe at Home Project. Dave, whenever you're ready. Sure. Uh, so Rowan House uh, is a volunteer group uh, who did a, a safe at home project in Claire's home and it was uh, geared towards um, a, a unique approach to domestic violence whereby the the offender would be removed from the household uh, rather than the uh, the victims uh, seeking shelter and refuge uh, the offender would be removed and uh, get some counseling and services uh, and so they uh, this would be a little bit before my time but uh, they connected with council initially and got a warm welcome uh, and they're just indicating that they're wrapping up their work uh, in, in Claire's home. They, they still have a year left on the pilot program. Um, but they're, they're having some, uh, I believe, struggles just with transportation being in a, in a kind of a, not a big center uh, when they have people uh, at their housing and, and uh, rehabbing or counseling. Uh, those people still have issues uh, getting transport, say they're from Lethbridge or Calgary or whatever, uh, maintaining their regular jobs. It, it's been a real challenge. So um, they're going to continue to do their uh, services online, <coughs> offer their services online without an actual uh, location uh, in Claire's home. Uh, they just wanted to say thanks for the, for the support. Any comments, questions? Take it for information. Moving on, number six, correspondence, National Police Federation, the NPF's recommendation for a safer Alberta budget 2023. Abe? So we know we recognize uh, by now the uh, National Police Federation correspondence. We've seen quite a few of these lately. Uh, they're, they're still advocating against uh, 
a provincial police force and they have uh, recommended uh, rather than spending uh, millions of dollars for transition costs to a, a provincial police force they've got a few um, initiatives that they're suggesting uh, maintain the the national police force and invest in these initiatives they highlighted here which is 164 million to increase uh, regular member strength by 633 additional positions plus 250 administrative staff uh, 38 million invested in proactive initiatives to reduce rural crime across the province uh, and an additional 1 million invested into areas across the public safety continuum to support rural and remote community access to services and lastly 4 million in grant funding to municipalities to support the implementation of the police advisory committees so uh, just again continuing to advocate for their uh, uh, retention of the RCMP in the province open it up for discussion looks like money spent better than it would be on the transitional fees but that's just my opinion any other comments <coughs> I'll take that for information Let's see. moving on number seven correspondence Clarissa and District Chamber of Commerce 2023 Clarissa Trade Fair okay. yeah so the uh, trade fair is coming up uh, the town uh, mm -hmm. is a regular uh, um, uh, we normally buy a booth at the trade fair, right? And so uh, it's it's coming up again soon. So we'd like you guys, you guys, as in council, to uh, mark it on your calendars, please. And uh, normally we have a couple councillors uh, assist at the booth and promote uh, the town, um, and normally buy a large booth, I believe. So don't want me like Lynn. We would like a motion, uh, motion directing administration to do that. Motion right up. Discussion. Motion for a large booth. All right. Moved by Councillor Carlson. Question. Yeah. Uh, moved by Councillor Carlson to support the Claire's Home and District Chamber of Commerce 2023 trade, trade fair on April 28th and 29th, 2020, 2023, with a large booth. Uh, in the amount of three hundred and fifty dollars. Any further questions, comments, concerns? All in favor? Passed. We'll uh, we'll reach out and just kind of book the dates and coordinate that. Absolutely. All right. No, come on. <laughs> Request for decision renewal stream application. Abe. Yeah, we had some. Uh, immigration experts in town last week uh, national and provincial representatives from the respective uh, immigration programs as as you know we are part of the federal uh, ARNIP program and um, which is a pilot program immigration uh, program since the ARNIP program came out the rural and northern immigration pilot uh, the province has since started their own immigration program and it very closely mirrors uh, what the federal government has done. Uh, the ARNIT program ends in 2024 and the provincial program uh, will continue for I believe at least a year longer than that. Uh, and so we have uh, had uh, a lot of people coming moving to Claire's home through this uh, immigration uh, pathway and uh, we're hoping that uh, council sees uh, sees value and also applying for the provincial um, pathway as well so we can carry on that program if desired in the future uh, the program deadline is coming up and so um, they're gonna stop accepting applications within the next few weeks uh, in terms of manpower and capacity, uh, as I said previously, uh, it's very similar uh, to uh, the existing program we have. So a lot of the heavy lifting has already been done uh, to get the program up and running. And we see us running uh, fairly easily in tandem with uh, the programs that we already have. Okay. Open it up for discussion. Are the screening processes the same? 
uh, right, to my, I don't know if screening is the right word to use, but. Yeah, uh, to my knowledge, they, they are fairly similar. Um, okay. There's no money that has to be set aside for settling costs with the provincial board. Right? Minor differences are pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, the RNM program is not scheduled to quit. They just haven't decided whether they're going to extend it. Or what form it will take in the future. Right. The, the pilot ends in 2024, and, and what that looks like moving forward, they don't know yet. Yeah. I'm going to make this motion. Moved by Councillor Sloshberger. Question? Um, Moved by Councillor Sloshberger to direct uh, the Economic Development Officer to prepare and apply to the Alberta Advantage Rural Renewal Stream. Any further discussion with this? All those in favour? Passed. Moving on, request for decision, subdivision application, old railway lands. Abe? Yeah, so there's a subdivision application uh, for your consideration here tonight, uh, Council, as you mentioned, it's the old railway lands. Uh, our planner, uh, Gavin Scott from Orsk, is here. Uh, Gavin, would you be able to uh, provide some uh, background on this? Uh, I'll just uh, say the quickly that this uh, initiative uh, came from, uh, it actually passed through the Community Development Committee already and has received uh, approval um, to subdivide these properties to um, that the town owns. These are old railway properties. There used to be a uh, restrictive covenant on it that pre prevented uh, subdivision that's been lifted now and so um, the proposal is there are several property owners on here that uh, would like to um, acquire the land that's adjacent or directly to the east of their properties and extend their um, extend their properties that would be a more logical uh, division of land uh, if, if that were to take place and I'll just turn it over to Gavin with any additional planning details yeah, so this property <clears throat> was created in 2009 when the alley was created. So Gavin, can I just get you to talk? Thank you. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. So this property was created in 2009 uh, when the alley was created between the, the block, basically, taking all the railway lands, creating an alley, and then leaving this remnant parcel, which at the time staff didn't have a very good handle on how to deal with CPR. CPR was kind of a closed book. And to get uh, to where you are today is quite a coup for staff to actually have found somebody to talk to, legally get through the process, to have those caveats removed that were encumbering the, this title, and making it so that not many people were interested in the property, and, and clearing the title is very important to this process. Uh, the next thing was that this was zone direct control, and that's why it's here in front of you tonight. Normally, subdivision is dealt with by your MPC, and as such, that's where it usually goes, but direct control is an animal of council, and as such, any decision regarding subdivision in a direct control district would have to come here. So this evening we have before you <coughs> Resolution 2022-0173 and in that you'll uh, see that we are recommending approval. Uh, within the resolution you'll find that there was some reserve amounts owing uh, through a deferred reserve caveat that is on that title. And once that's paid off, then generally that's just a ledger movement on your part um, you guys pay it and if you're passing that pa that cost on to the purchasers that's something to keep track of uh, but once clear that also clear the title of this this encumbrance your conditions are listed there for outstanding taxes to be paid entering into a development agreement if it's necessary and then all the consolidations with each title. So that's that uh, condition number three that has all those titles. So title to title to title, all telling the surveyor how to put this together. You have also listed your reasons and your informative. Uh, there were no concerns of adjacent landowners regarding this process and no additional easements required by the utility companies. So if you have any further questions, you can shoot them my way and I'll try to answer them. Any questions? Okay. 
questions for Gavin? I will say that I would like a signature tonight so I can process this tomorrow and not wait until we get a signature another day, so. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gavin, have all the, uh, you mentioned that all the landowners are in favor of moving forward with this, of the different lots and blocks and such? That was my understanding from your staff, but I have to turn that back to Abe as to his understanding. Uh, so uh, every, every landowner uh, north of the Cal Tire, uh, so it's not, there are some uh, brown, brownfield properties there. Uh, that we haven't been able to establish uh, a, uh, any interest, uh, not, not a response at all from them. Uh, so it won't affect those properties. Uh, uh, but the other, the other property owners are in, are in favor. Thank you. Any other questions for Gavin? I would like to make that motion. Moved by Councillor Kettles, question. Uh, moved by Councillor Kettles to approve the subdivision of the old railway lands with conditions as presented. Any further questions, comments, concerns? So we're all reading through all the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> really quick. Um, all those in favor? Pass. <laughs> oh, he's not <laughs> he's not he's not he's not he's the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The bench was this night court. <laughs> what was I supposed to say? I have no idea. What's it called? That was hard. Roger, you know, you're the shaker. Is you, that how that goes? <laughs> <laughs> Does he know that's the sale agreement? <laughs> I think it's good to put. Two. Oh, sorry. Um, I think it'll be good to to give those landowners a little extra space back there. Yeah. They're, they're either using it or their customers are using it anyway. True. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Moving on to number 10, information brief. Admonson Park update. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so good news uh, on the uh, Admonson Park uh, redevelopment. I'm just going to scroll down to it here, uh, Council, so bear with me, please. There's a lot of land titles there to read through. Uh, so, just a little bit of background uh, or history on the uh, Amundsen uh, Park redesign. It began as a, a council project in 2019 uh, with the creation of a community uh, visioning committee. Um, uh, so, including representation from numerous community groups. Uh, design work was completed in 2019 and 2020. Uh, and uh, with the actual work beginning on the park in 2021, starting with the gazebo, uh, which was uh, spearheaded by the Lions. Um, and so we've got a, a summary of the uh, funding uh, that the town has received to date and uh, particularly uh, proud of the staff for um, the competitive grants that they received and the amount of funding uh, they've been able to acquire uh, 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 towards this project. Um, note that uh, very little has actually come directly from uh, local taxpayers. Um, you have some federal and some provincial uh, non-competitive grants uh, that have contributed to the funding as well. Uh, and we've had a lot of help from community groups as well, assisting with writing grants uh, and even uh, providing contributions uh, to, to the re redesign of the park. Lions and the Kinsmen in, in particular. Um, so this uh, recent one that we uh, received uh, was uh, the Pathways and Lighting Project. Uh, from the Active Transportation Fund, uh, and it was awarded in the amount of $190,000 uh, at 60% funding. And so this will inc improve our, our town pathways path and, and uh, transport, 
non-mobile transportation around the park um, and uh, the lighting, the access to the parks uh, and um, items like that. Uh, we are also applying for additional uh, funding to offset uh, the costs for this next phase. Uh, the Enabling Accessibility Fund and the CFEP Community Facility Enhancement uh, Program. So, uh, just waiting to hear back on those. Um, but uh, just good news, and wanted to report that to uh, to council and to the community. Open it up for discussion, comments. Good just, job, guys. Yeah, With all just of a your big thank you. Yeah, you we put a lot of hard work into that. We uh, we will be looking at doing a uh, uh, ribbon cutting. The fencing is down uh, now or around the uh, pavilion, hmm. and we're hoping to do some kind of ribbon cutting. So we'll be reaching out to you shortly to see who can make it to that and have the um, uh, local press there as well. Um, just a discussion around the community some I think it's important for us to when we have the opportunity to take, it, take note of the fact that a lot of this almost all of it has come through grant funding and, and not you know directly from town coffers I, I there's occasionally some concern raised out there that wow we're, we're putting a lot into that park and, and yes we are uh, but for good reason and when opportunity came up to do that it just made sense to go ahead that way so Absolutely. Yeah, well said. Anything else? Take that for information. Moving on, 11, information brief, CAO report. Yep. Uh, just a monthly report uh, to council and to the community on the activities that administration has been involved in. You'll see uh, information from all of our uh, various departments in there. Any questions about the CAO report? Nope. Thanks, Abe. Take that for information. 12, information brief, council committee reports. Would anyone like to elaborate? No, thank you. All right. There it is. Take that for information. Uh, moving on, 13, information brief, council resolution status. Abe? Any questions on uh, previous motions, uh, council? progress thereof All right, looking for an adoption of the information items mm -hmm. moved by Councillor Cutler all those in favor passed looking for a motion to go in camera at 7 27 p.m. for FOIP section 17 and FOIP section 20 Four. I'll make that motion to go into camera. Okay. Moved by Council Meister. All those in favor? Passed in camera at 7.28 p.m. Camera off. Looking for a motion to come out of camera at 8.26 p.m. I'll make the motion to come out of in camera. Moved by Council Meister. All those in favor? Passed. Looking for a motion. For FOIP section 17, personnel. I'll make that motion. And what is that motion? I don't know Please. what to say. I so just make the motion for FOIP 17 as discussed in, in camera. I don't, I don't think we need to announce the details. Correct. Correct? Correct? Is that, is that what I'm supposed to say? Yeah. I will, uh, right? Sorry. That's yes. What I was like, okay. I was the camera's on. I was just kind of nervous about yep. what to say. So nope. I will You're going to make that motion? Move what we discussed in camera on FOIP section 17. Thank you. Any thoughts, comments in regards to this? All those in favor? Passed. Any opposed? One opposed. Motion carried. Looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.27 p.m. Moved by Councillor Kettles. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned at 8.28 p.m. Camera off.